Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Sean, and today we got to talk about a situation that is unfolding in New York City, where a mall that is stationed in a major transit hub, eight different subway lines in this particular area, a relatively new subway station, has decided that they're going to try to break their lease in order to close down because crime is absolutely out of control in this particular area. Now, we're going to get into this. We're going to get into the city trying to force them to stay despite criminality, but before we do, I want to thank everybody who signed up over an actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. And remind you that on April 27th, Saturday, I will be in Austin, Texas, Vulcan Gas Company for MindsFest. Link to tickets in the top of the description. War of words escalating tonight at one of New York City's largest transit hubs. We're talking about the Fulton Center in Lower Manhattan. There's a mall inside and the operator says crime has gotten so bad there, they are breaking the lease and closing down shops. But the MTA says... Not so fast. I want you guys to think about how far we have fallen in the city of New York. We have a major transit hub right here. A lot of foot traffic. This would normally lead to good business in this particular area. Wealthy clientele willing to shop there. But because crime is so out of hand, despite the lies that Governor Kathy Hochul was telling on The View lately, people want to close. And by the way, the crime is in fact real. This chart from John Jay College of Criminal Justice shows how much retail theft in particular is up. That is an increase of 70 percent post the Black Lives Matter riots just over a two-year period, and in 2023, the numbers didn't look that much better. And the cause of this, let's be clear about that, is New York State bail reform law, which is championed by Governor Kathy Hochul. The fact of the matter is, and I will repeat this forever on this channel until policy changes, but 327 people are responsible for a third of the retail theft arrests in the city of New York. However, because of bail reform, they consistently get a same-day automatic release, and this represents, by the way, over 6,000 arrests, so a lot of these people not only get that same-day automatic release, but when they are released that very same day, they go and steal from another store. Until this is fixed, until judges can actually have judgment, which in the state of New York, they don't even have the level of judgment that allows them to hold people who have the dismembered body parts of two people on their property, obvious murderers and people who are covering up a murder, this problem will continue. But the New York City MTA has decided that they're going to fight back by trying to force the mall company to stay in this area because we all know it's always great when you do business when the government is forcing you to do business in there. You will lose money. That is the position of the MTA and we're not going to do a damn thing about the crime problem that you're experiencing or any of your concerns. There is a real tug of war happening here. Now the MTA is asking a judge to step in and force Westfield to stay. The shops are supposed to be part of Fulton Center's appeal. Retail upstairs, a transit hub that services eight subway lines down below. But something's happened. Most of the shops are gone, some now filled with art. So if there's anything that can represent the failure of left-wing governance more than what they just said on the local news right there, I have yet to find it. You have all these businesses going out due to the crime that's out of control. It's out of control due to progressive policies like bail reform. And now that they don't have any way for people to actually go into these stores and nobody wants to rent this particular space due to the criminality, they decided in response to that to put art up in these abandoned storefronts so that way you can enjoy the decoration of the decay of the city of New York. They got an open wound, it needs stitches, it needs something in order to deal with the infection, but rather than reach for the antibiotics, they're like, you know what, we could get you a band-aid and that band-aid can be placed somewhere separate from the wound, it's not even going to stop the bleeding, but we're we're going to draw a nice design on said band-aid so that way you're going to be like wow look at the pretty kitty cat on the band-aid as i blew it out from a wound that's six inches higher than where you stuck the band-aid it's a beautiful place but it could be a little more well kept and they need to do more in assisting the homeless so yeah there's definitely a serious increasing homeless problem in the city of new york and i will point out that this is while simultaneously you're seeing all this money being sent to refurbished dilapidated hotels in order to house migrants and unfortunately the american homeless population tends to be disproportionately mentally ill disproportionately drug addicted so these people aren't able to wait on 
online engage in the system the way that these migrants are able to do so. There's not as many NGOs in order to back them, and of course, they don't have the super citizen rights that people defrauding the asylum system have, so we're spending hundreds of millions into the billions of dollars in order to house and feed this foreign population, this law-breaking population, this population that's taking advantage of our asylum system, while the homeless are just left to linger and die in these malls, and then rather than address that problem, rather than address the fact that you're decimating your own tax base, rather than do something that would help the businesses, the goose that lays the golden egg for New York to incinerate your money on this migrant crisis in the first place, they're deciding to go after the mall, go after these companies that have to deal with the consequences of New York City policy because you can never, ever address the undergirding progressive principles that led us to this situation. And by the way, we've talked about malls in the Brooklyn Fulton Station having to ban teenagers in a way to prevent them from committing crimes in the mall and all these other steps that they need to take in order to deal with the criminality and unfortunately what we find out is that those measures have to be balanced against the fact that regular ordinary consumers don't like those measures as well and that can also lead to them driving down business which means the only solution to this problem is to arrest thieves have consequences for their actions because if you put in greater security protocols in your store that might deter some thefts although when you know that there's no consequences legally for it it doesn't really do that but it also scares off customers so you end up creating a death spiral and rather than address the root of the death spiral which is progressive policy they're deciding that of course we have to go after the people who don't want to do business here because they're losing tons and tons of money doing business here homelessness is part of the reason that West feel the mall operator wants out. Its leaders say crime is also a big issue. So much so that some shop owners aren't renewing leases, others breaking them early. Yeah, I guess the homeless issue can become an issue at some point because of how like mental health is kicking in. Honestly, one of the things that I cannot stand, one of the things that I'm losing my ability to deal with is when they interview these average everyday people on the streets of New York City that know nothing about policy. They just know the approved talking points and they end up throwing something like that at you. So this guy's like homelessness. I've been told that that is associated with mental illness, which by the way, I even said in this video, but that's just the end point of the conversation. Oh, mental illness. We got to deal with mental health care. Yeah, I guess the homeless issue can become an issue at some point because of how like mental health is kicking in. The homeless population in New York City has been mentally ill, just like across this country, for a very long time. The difference is we now have policies that cater and enable these people rather than policies that have consequences for them and that work to restore order and clean up the streets. So again, that that is an unchanged variable in terms of the homeless population. What we should be talking about is what is changed. And yes, I bring up the mental illness because I want you to understand that a lot of these programs that they institute and spend money on, the mentally ill homeless people aren't suddenly going to become competent enough in order to engage with. But the fact of the matter is there were enforcement mechanisms. We didn't just throw carrots. We also used sticks in order to get these people off the streets, out of the subway system, and out of the malls. We can actually do stuff like that and the reason I know that is because we were doing stuff like that prior to the Bill de Blasio administration not a long time ago not in 1955 not in 1892 but recently as recently as 10 years ago we had solutions to these problems we had the ability to address it but now we're pretending like there's nothing that we could do and we just say mental health mental health oh my god think about the mental health of the homeless people rather than address the problems that these people are actually creating on Wednesday, we saw homeless advocates near the turnstiles. The MTA is a landlord here. Listen, I'm an American. I believe in the First Amendment. I believe in freedom of speech. But honestly, we, we need to do something about these homeless advocates. We need to do something about these NGOs and whatnot because I'm sick and tired of these people. They go in, they end up defending the rights of these people to destroy everything. And the fact of the matter is, most of the time, they're being subsidized by the taxpayer. Its leaders told us they have confidence in the NYPD to deal with a crime and they want Westfield to stay put. I mean, just think about how absurd and asinine this situation actually is. The taxpayer sends money to the city of New York, the local government. They give money to these organizations 
organizations that advocate for the homeless, that want no enforcement against them at all whatsoever, they fund them, then the homeless are allowed to linger and destroy and ruin areas, which decimates the tax base, and then, in response to that, the New York City government doesn't say, wait a minute, we're kind of cutting off our nose to spite our face, they say, you know what, we need to redirect more money to this professional homeless industrial complex class, so that they can do this to other places, because unfortunately, we have more businesses that are open, and we need to destroy that, gosh, I wonder what this is going to do to the tax base, it's insane, it's madness, I'm watching this happen over and over again, not just in New York City, but in cities across this country, and by the way, it's not just blue cities and blue states, a lot of times this happens in blue cities in red states, I've been in Austin recently, I'm going to go there for the Mines Fest, like I said in the open, and it's disastrous watching what has gone on in that particular area, and to see such disarray, such disaster in the Texas state capitol when you have Greg Abbott who's doing all these things in order to fight back against migrants is infuriating for me because if you think, hey, you know what, at least you have these red states, these red bastions of freedom, in reality, they still allow too much control for these insane local government policies. And by the way, as bad as I've seen New York City, nothing was worse than seeing the state of the homelessness problem in Austin, Texas, as I saw it the last time I was over there for a mines event. So the transit system is suing. The lawsuit filed in federal court last month says that the agency will face irreparable injury if Westfield abandons the Fulton Center, saying that there are three reasons that Westfield can break its 20 year lease and crime and homelessness are not included. Now, look, while it is true that Westfield did sign this 20 year lease and I believe in contract law and there is a case from the MTA, I find it rather a annoying, rather distressing, that they're actually putting money up in order to sue Westfield for wanting to leave due to criminality, rather than putting that into the MTA police in order to deal with criminality. So we're in a situation here where the laws were completely changed midway through their lease. Obviously, this was an unexpected anomaly in their contract, so they actually don't have a crime clause, a homelessness clause, in order to address it. So they're meant to take the brunt of this, and by the way, this is a risk of doing business where you end up having to take losses because all these other stores are refusing to renew their leases due to the problems caused by the city of New York. So essentially, you have the MTA saying, we're the landlord, you signed a contract with us, true, 100%. You don't have a crime exemption to said contract, true, 100%. But you know what? We're going to make it so much worse for you that you can't do business here and then sue you for not being able to do business here. Transit leaders accuse Westfield of advancing its own self-serving business interests, saying that hurts the MTA, retail operators and the public. So just to be clear, I don't give a crap at all about the interests of the MTA. It's within the interests of the MTA to police this criminal problem. They're not doing so. So honestly, if they're not going to do what's in their interest, why should Westfield subordinate their business interests to them? They also say it's hurting the vendors, the retailers, the people who are in this location. But in reality, in actuality, that's not the case. They're already leaving because the MTA is hurting them. So again, even though the MTA actually has a pretty solid case against Westfield Mall, it seems like it's a huge problem when you have these government agencies not addressing the problems that the government can address, but then they're suing you for having to deal with the consequences of them and realizing that you're going to lose a ton of money, potentially go bankrupt in order to do so. The lawsuit includes a letter from a Westfield executive which says the current situation is financially unsustainable and Westfield is no longer in a position to be able to operate its premises at Fulton Center. So yeah, right there you have an executive for Westfield saying the obvious. This is completely unsustainable as a business. They got to get out. And I understand why they're attempting to do so. Again, because the rules have changed so dramatically in the city of New York that they've made the situation completely untenable. I think something needs to be done just to make everybody happy. So, Look, a lot of times when we do these local news segments and they interview New Yorkers, I talk about how these New Yorkers are absolutely killing it. But this guy and everybody they interviewed throughout the course of this segment, they're not, they're not interviewing viewing our best. This guy just said, look, something needs to be done to make everybody happy. This is on par with my policy proposal, my platform that I'm running for president on, which is I'm in favor of good things and against bad things. Let us do more good things at a political level, but do less bad things at a political level. What are you saying? Take a stand. This is like the South Park flag episode where you have two people in favor of changing the flag, two people opposed to changing the flag, and then thousands of people who are just stating both sides of the 
issue generically because they can't make a decision. It's it's really frustrating to see this time and time again. Just pick a side. Even if you're wrong. Even if you're like, you know what? The hobos should have the divine right to destroy everything in the city of New York, decimate the tax base, ruin all public services. At least that will be a position that I can actually argue with. But you saying, oh, wow, they need to do something that will make everybody happy. Oh, golly gee, th thank you for that. Why even cut to that guy saying that? If we're being perfectly honest, he added nothing to the conversation. The MTA tells us that this is the busiest station in Lower Manhattan, and that obviously shows why they care so much about what happens here. Again, I really want you to think about what they just said right there. They said this is one of the busiest stations, if not the busiest station, in all of Manhattan. So at the busiest station in all of Manhattan, you have a mall that's completely unsustainable due to the criminality, and yet the issue the MTA has is not of the criminals, not of the homeless advocates protecting the divine right of said criminals to ruin this particular area, but it's of the business who has to respond to the fact that this area has been completely ruined. You have the foot traffic in order to support a bunch of different stores in this particular area, but the fact of the matter is policy in the city of New York is not allowing them to do so. Policy in the statewide level, bail reform, and all these other criminal justice reforms are not allowing them to do so. We're seeing the consequences of progressive policy in real time, and rather than address that, rather than actually make changes in the law, what we're seeing in response is they're suing the businesses for not liking the change in the law. It's crazy, it's asinine, and it just goes to show you how you hollow out a major metropolitan area. It's basically a textbook example of how to do so, and I don't know what to say besides that. So you know what? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Should they be forced to lose money by the MTA, or maybe should New York actually clean up its act and fix the problems? If you like this video, then show me by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about this crazy situation in Manhattan. Till next time.